is a game over for Neil Stock. Of course, I'm going to tell you not. But we got to admit that there's something that ain't right. All right. But of course, I got to remind you that Neo is still one of the best EV companies out there in the world. And if you look at the performance, I know some of you guys are stressed out about delivery numbers not getting up there. In the month of March, if you look at the luxury EV category, all right, because Neos are quite expensive, all right, 300K and above, I just want to remind you guys that Neo has a 46.2% market share of the entire luxury EV market. So above 300K RMB, Neo has 46.2% of the market. The closest second place, BMW, only has 25.7% of the market share. Then Tesla, above 300K RMB in the premium range, only has 2.3% market share here in China. Quite shocking, quite shocking to be very, very honest. And then if you look at the vehicle model sold, all right, above 300K RMB, NEO has multiple car models in the top five uh, best sellers. So NEO is doing very well in the premium EV market. And I just want to remind you guys, but clearly, you know, something's off. Yesterday, on Friday, the stock dropped almost 8% down to $4.11 per share. Absolutely brutal drop. A lot of, uh, it's very painful. <sighs> Man, it is very painful. It is very painful. But what, what could be some of the things that Neo is doing wrong? Doing wrong. And is the game over? Of course not. Some of the things that we wish that Neo would do better would be, of course, communicating more with investors. What's going on with... Uh, some of these partnerships, what can they get out of it? You know, maybe showcase some numbers. What's in hold for the future of NEO? You know, they got to make a bit more uh, public announcements and, and stuff like that. Uh, they're not really active on Twitter to communicate with shareholders. And also, of course, missing guidance doesn't really help at all. You know, Q1 deliveries, revising it down, kind of a, a punch in the gut, to be honest. So previously, I have said that I thought that 4.39-ish, 4.4-ish would be the bottom of Neo stock with that uh, chart trend line. But unfortunately, we broke below it. We convincingly broke below it. And where do we go from here? Of course, we can reclaim it. All right, we, the, the stock price could come back up and reclaim this trend line, which is very possible. And this is what I'm leaning towards. But it's also very possible that we just keep on heading down with all the selling pressure, all the selling pressure. And uh, now fear is at an all time high. Very clear. It's very clear about that market cap of nine point one billion. We're pretty much almost about cash level. Right. New has eight billion in cash. So pretty much valuing the company uh, for less than one billion without the cash. It just doesn't really make sense. And clearly it is very severely oversold. Having that said, yes, we could go down lower, but this is like an area where if you bought in now, looking a few years down in the future, this is an extremely cheap buy. But some people are very pessimistic about the future for Neo and, and some people are believing that uh, Neo is going to burn their cash down to oblivion. Uh, they're nowhere near profitability and they don't really see the success that the sub-brand will offer. Look, the sub-brand will succeed. You offer the right price with the right features, have the right product, you know, good quality, it's going to sell. Here in China, that's basically the formula. Give people things they want. It's going to sell for sure. But even if you do not believe that it's going to sell and you believe that Neo is going to go under in a few years, I'm telling you that the infrastructure alone is going to be Neo's knight in shining armor, basically. Because Neo's infrastructure is the biggest out of all the auto companies out there. And the infrastructure alone, if you were to list 
that company, infrastructure company, that would probably be worth at least three, four billion dollars. All right, just the infrastructure of the charters and the swap stations. And like I said in the past, Neo was at a point where they're kind of too big to fail. All right, they're they're so massive. They got so much infrastructure that the government would not want to see Neo go down. And Neo is sort of like China's first luxury, truly luxury tech brand that is like capable of having success outside of China and perhaps the first company with tech that is perhaps better than what the other people are offering, uh, competitors are offering. So in that essence, Neo is like the golden child. Now remember back in 2019 when we faced a similar dire difficulty and remember back then it was even more hard because Neo had no money uh, in the bank. Neo was uh, potentially going to go under in a few months or, or, or a couple of weeks back then. It was a very dire situation. But, you know, of course, the Hefei government came in and rescued Neo. They did a very fantastic uh, asset swap deal where, you know, they formed Neo China. Neo China owned the assets and Neo Inc. owned a portion of Neo China. The rest was owned by the investors, which included the Anhui government. It was a very fantastic rescue package and that really worked out and really really helped you know the the Anhui government they made a very juicy return off of that rescue so you know it's it's a situation where if they go to them again they would happily happily come back and shake their hands and do another rescue package it's at that point where it's in nobody's best interest to see Neo fail. So there will always be a company that will be willing to buy Neo out or rescue Neo or even the government come and rescue Neo. That's pretty much guaranteed, all right? That's pretty much guaranteed. So having that said, it's just, are you brave enough to buy Neo stock when it's uh, very, very low? I, I know it doesn't feel good to buy Neo stock uh, when it's low. It feels like, you know, it could drop further and you might just made a bad choice and might have caught a falling knife but on the flip side would you rather be buying the stock when it's at 50 60 dollars a share and and what has changed since new uh was at 50 and 60 dollars a share you could argue that right now new has more swap stations more patents more tech all right uh, with chips and everything more self-developed stuff more vehicles more uh sub brands coming out they're in a much better spot right now than they were back when new stock was at 56 dollars a share the only thing that's changed is investor sentiment before when people saw the et7 that was like around the peak of new stock 60 66 dollars a share people were very amazed by the future potential of neo with the lidar and and four or an x chips and they were the first to do it just extreme computing power, much better than a Tesla, just knocks them out of the park. But of course, as time, you know, went by, people became more and more pessimistic. And that really reflected on the stock price. So what has changed right now? Investor sentiment. That's the only thing that's really changed. So I think for you guys, if it's very painful to hold new stock, it might be time to reevaluate why you bought into new stock was it because you believed in the company the tech and the future that it holds and do you think that is still valid right now the reason for buying the stock at six dollars or ten dollars or fifteen dollars or even higher is that reason still valid today do you still believe in the future of neo or are you like some of those guys that think neo will eventually go bankrupt of course, Neo is doing tremendously well in its segment. Yes, in terms of overall EV market, there's some really cheap cars that are out outselling Neos. That's very normal. Neo is going to come out with a cheap car soon. Are you going to be uh, in for the ride when Neo gets the profits from those vehicles? Or are you going to sell out now out of fear and desperation? So ask yourself that. Ask yourself that. Are Neo's products still fantastic products? The answer is yes. All of them have a word design with a five-star and cap safety rating in mind. They are some of the best cars in terms of quality and safety. They don't really cut costs like use aluminum cables like some of the competitors do 
or, or use inferior materials or compromise on safety. Neo is one of those down to earth great companies that you can feel comfortable standing behind. Now, of course, profitability is a big concern, but that's going to come later on with the sub brand and the sub sub brand. So you've rode through the pain. Are you going to sell out now or are you going to reap the rewards? I personally still maintain the thinking that right now we're at least at the bottom or near the bottom. And as I uh, transfer some more money back to Canada, buy more new stock, you know, it, it's a no brainer for me. It's a no brainer for me. This car that I had, no problems at all with three and a half years of usage. Just a fantastic car, fantastic vehicle, fantastic product, fantastic service. Everything is fantastic. And I can agree that a lot of other NEO owners, most NEO owners, would also vouch for NEO. Having that said, of course, it is not game over for NEO stock. It is at a bargain discount. The stock market is the only market where if things are on heavy discount, you run away, which is very odd, right? But when it's at an all-time high prices, people rush in. So it's very counterintuitive. Just remain logical and revisit why you bought into the stock, all right? As always, stay safe, stay healthy. Peace out.